Hey, welcome back to the Airsoft Mike YouTube channel and I have another one. This time it's the CO2 version of the officially licensed Umarex, or if you like Elite Force, Glock 17. Okay, so if you get the CO2 Deluxe version, you will get this case. Or if you want to try and save a few more coins, just get the non-deluxe version, because it's the same exact pistol, and source the case separately online, because there are some good deals for the Glock case on its own. Now, one of the main things I want to look into today is whether this CO2 Glock 17 is exactly the same as this normal gas version. Well, I would suggest externally, yes, it should be exactly the same. However, is it any different internally? We're gonna have a look at that in a moment. So, first thing we're going to do is have a look and see what we get in terms of accessories. Now, I'm expecting it to be not that much different, really, to what you get with this gas version here. Um, there should be, as it is CO2, a hex key. Yep, I can see one. And of course, there's your hex key. And of course, you get your two back straps, which is really handy for different size hands. And you get your back strap pin. And here we have the pistol itself. We'll have a good look at that in a moment. But let me just show you your instruction manual. And as I've shown you in my previous unboxing, these are the people responsible for the licensing of this officially licensed Airsoft Glock, and it has a pretty comprehensive instruction manual. Ha, look, you even get a section here if you want to make notes. Okay, so let's get this bad boy out. Now, I know some of you may be saying, why would you get another Glock 17 when you already have one here? Well, to be fair, I did say I will get every single one that they release over a period of time. I'm not gonna buy them all in one go because I can't make one video all in one go. So I'll do it over a period of time and it would only be fair for me to also get the CO2 version of this pistol just to see what the differences are in terms of build internally because externally there shouldn't be any difference apart from the magazine bases but we'll get into that in a moment. And of course, what sort of power you're going to get out of this CO2 version. Now, in terms of how it looks externally, let me just drop this mag. There really is no difference whatsoever when you look at it like this, compared to the regular gas version of this Glock 17. Now, of course, once you get this mag in, you can tell the difference straight away. But again, I must stress, that can't be the only difference get the green gas version. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna call this the green gas version, although you can use red gas and propane and you know, here we go. So, green gas version right here. Here's the green gas version mag. This is the CO2 version right here. Will it fit? Yes. Will it do it the other way around? Green gas version, CO2 mag. Yes, but again, you may ask, apart from having more money than sense, but anyway, but again, you may ask, why did I go and buy another G17 if the mags are, you know, interchangeable? The fact of the matter is, this is the Airsoft Mike channel. I'm here to show you these things so you can make an informed decision for yourself. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get this bad boy open. Now, I am expecting there to be some kind of difference. I really don't think it will be exactly the same slide. I'd be disappointed if it was. There must be some form of reinforcement in the CO2 version, because as we all know, CO2 kicks just that little bit harder than your regular green gas. Okay, so that I never mix the two up, for the purpose of this video, whenever I show both of these Glocks on screen at the same time, the CO2 version will always be on this side of your screen. And the green gas version will be on this side of your screen. So, let's pop the mag out. And this will be quite interesting to see. I'm gonna pop this slide off. 
Okay, so this is the internal of the slide on the green gas version. So let's compare the two, remembering my rule of keeping the CO2 version on this side, okay? Now at first look, they look exactly the same, don't they? There's your dual spring system on both slides. They look exactly the same. But can you see there, one of them, as we move down the slide, appears to have a bit more reinforcement than the other one. Now, just in case you're wondering, well, which one is the CO2 one and which one's the green gas version? Well, whenever I show you these slides in this position, the CO2 will always be on the top. Can you spot the difference? I can see it. The piece of metal on this green gas version right here is thinner than the piece of metal right here on the CO2 version, which appears to the naked eye to be thicker. Look, I'll try and show you this in many different angles as possible. You can literally see it's a thicker piece of metal, which suggests to me, because the CO2 kicks harder, it would need a more reinforced internals on the slide. Now what I've done here is I've spun the guide rods around so that they are both in the same position. So you can have a good old look at the pair of them equally. But again, you know, I can't see much more of a difference between the two apart from that thickened reinforced piece I just showed you. I can see there is another slight difference here somewhere. I don't know if this makes any difference. Again, I'm not a tech. Can you see what that little rod piece right there? Can, can you, it's there, but it doesn't seem to be as prominent in this bottom one. Can you see it? That's the same piece right here. And here it is here on the CO2. I'm just picking that tiny little things. It could be, I don't know. That may not have anything to do with anything, but I'm just showing it to you. Then it was at this point my heart nearly came up into my mouth because I thought I had spotted a hairline fracture or a crack just around that screw on the CO2 version. In fact, two or three cracks. But then I opened it up again, ran my finger around the screw and it just turned out to be silicon oil or some form of grease that's in there that had sort of gathered together or congealed together and one of them looking very much like a crack, wasn't a crack, phew. Okay, so let's have a look at the lower frames. I would suggest there's no difference at all in those. CO2, lower frame. Green gas, lower frame. Again, CO2 on the top. Green gas on the bottom. And as far as I can see, Absolutely no difference whatsoever. Exact clones of each other. Unless you can see something different. Again, drop your comments down below. Now, of course, what I could do is mix these up and think to myself, it doesn't matter because, you know, they're the same thing. However, they do have unique serial numbers. So I will always know which one is the CO2 and which one's the green gas. Okay, so let's get this ready for a shooting test. And just before we go there, enjoy this nice little montage.
oh, oh, oh. how can you not love a Glock? Well, I know, it's not to everyone's taste. But anyway, if you'd like a, a slightly more in-depth look into the functionality of this Airsoft Glock 17, do check out the video I did on this Airsoft Glock 17. They're both officially licensed one by Umarex, or if you like, Elite Force, or if you like, VFC. Um, yeah, so check that video out. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna show you how to get it ready for the CO2. This is the mag that you would use for the CO2 version, and as I showed you earlier, it fits in the other pistol, but this version of the Glock 17 appears to be more reinforced in the slide, which would accommodate CO2. Now, the particular brand of CO2 that I'm using today is Crossman. Now, you can get many other brands, but this is my brand of choice. Now, you grab your supplied Allen key, you pop it in the hole right there, and you unscrew it so that this base, let me show it to you, there you go. You see that base down there? You need that to go down so it gives you room to put your CO2 in. So you just loosen it up a bit and then you pop your CO2 in. However, unlike green gas, there's no lubrication anywhere in this process. So what many people do is you see this little top part, the part that gets pierced once you get it in the mag properly, drop a little bit of silicon oil right on there before putting it in. Now, I have heard somewhere, I haven't seen them myself, I might do a bit of research and get some in. Apparently there are CO2 capsules that have silicon oil, but more often than not, they don't. So just pop a bit of oil on the top right there before putting it in. Or you can just spray a little silicon oil right there in the mag. And then you just tighten it up with the Allen key or hex key until you hear a little hiss. Sometimes you won't hear that hiss, but you tighten it up enough so that the top of this CO2 capsule is pierced. Okay, so just get some iPro on and we're gonna do a shooting test. Now, what I'm gonna go for, I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple gonna go for A, B, C, D and E, okay? So obviously I'm gonna try and hit the center of each target. And again, I have many people that are watching my videos for the first time. This is my lovely little Glock patch. Just to show you how small these targets are, this is the Glock patch next to one of the targets. Please take note of the BBs and the distance that I'll be shooting from. Right, and I reckon I'll put two in each. Oh my gosh, before I go into my results on the target system, damn this thing kicks. Compared to its green gas counterpart, this CO2 version definitely kicks harder. Okay, so my results are, got a shot either side of the bullseye. That's pretty neat, I like that. Then we move on to the second target. Both shots pretty much tore the target <laughs> in the same place. Again, I'm loving that because look how close I am to the bullseye. And then we get to target C, not as well as the previous targets, but again, if you take into consideration how small this is, that's still very good results right there. Got one right on the edge on the outside and one right on the edge on the inside. And then we get to targets D and E on D. You can see one shot landed there and one shot landed just above the bullseye. And then onto E, one shot way out there, and one shot again right above the bullseye. So in terms of accuracy, this CO2 version is pretty much the same as its green gas counterpart. 
But what about the power? Let's chrono this bad boy. Wow, that is some pretty decent results right there. Um, because of my previous research, I was expecting about 330, which is 30 more than its green gas counterpart. However, as you saw on my first shot, I think that was what, 346, something around there? So it started off nice and hot, <laughs> and then it sort of settled down, and I would give that an average reading of what the manufacturers do suggest, which is 330. I am absolutely impressed <laughs> with this CO2 version. Don't get me wrong, I love the green gas too, but I would also consider getting the CO2 if you want a bit more power out of your officially licensed Glock. Right, so, so far I think I've put about 22 rounds through this bad boy. I've got another 18 rounds in this mag. I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna keep firing just to get that nice feel and just to show you the blowback action. And let's see if the slide still locks back. Oh, awesome. That's a very crispy, snappy uh, effect that you get when you pull the trigger. Very responsive trigger, just like the green gas version, but it does kick just that little bit harder, which I would expect because it is CO2. And the great thing about this is that I'm still using the same CO2 cartridge that I put in there earlier. I haven't changed it yet. So let me fill it up again and let me keep firing this thing until the CO2 gives up. So there you go, another full mag. I think that's about 24 in there. Could be 25, could be 23. But hey, why don't you count as I fire? So, another full mag. Let's keep going. <laughs> awesome. Now, as I got to the end, I heard a slight difference in the noise as I was firing. So that suggests that the CO2 cartridge may just be starting to run low. Come on, let's go again. <laughs> there you go again. You can definitely hear the sound is slightly changing as the CO2 gets low. But again, look, the slide locks back. Let's keep going. Okay. And there you go, that's it people. <laughs> but I reckon that did pretty well. Let's just see what we've got left in the mag. <laughs> Almost empty. And look, there's two rounds there. Actually, there may be a cheeky third one down there. Let's just double check. There may be three rounds left in this. Yes, <laughs> three. Awesome. Oh, and of course, feel free to take that sticker off so you get that nice full Glock mag effect. <laughs> and the great thing is, it leaves no residue. Nice. So what are my pros and cons with this beast? Well, check out my other video because the pros and cons will be exactly the same, but I will tell you one extra one for this CO2 version. It's CO2. I've got other CO2 pistols that shoot harder or stronger than this, but you know, I'm not gonna complain because more often than not, especially over here in the UK, the FPS limits especially for CQB, is around 330, 340, 350 tops. But it would have been nice if this shot at around 340 to 350. 
technically it did, because you remember the first shot hits about three, four, six. Mm. But yeah, the pros, like with the first one I did the review on, very responsive trigger, loving the finish on this pistol, loving the fact that it's officially licensed by Glock. So yeah, I'm liking this. I think the next one I'll get will be a tiny little one. I'll get the Glock 42. So there you go, people. This is the officially licensed Glock 17 CO2 version. But if CO2 is not your bag and you prefer green gas or something that could take red gas or propane, then you've got this version right here. Now, if you're in certain parts of this world, especially America, when you do get to order one of these bad boys, yours will come with an orange tip at the front. Whether they can come off or not, I don't know. These are too new on the market for me to know. And plus, I will never get my hands on one because I always order these either from the UK or somewhere within Europe, and they never come with these orange tips because especially in the UK, we are not required to have them on the front. I believe in America, retailers have to ship them out to you with the orange tips at the front of the barrel. If you've got more information about that, or if indeed you live in America, drop your comments below regarding that. This is the Umarex, AKA Elite Force, AKA VFC, officially licensed Glock 17. And of course, during the course of time, I'll get the Glock 19, the Glock 42, and when it comes out, the Glock 18C. And of course, all the other Glocks that they plan to release. But the one I'm waiting for the most is the 18, the 18C, the full auto. Oh my gosh, will they? Because you know how awesome the 18C is on full auto, especially when you dual wield. Catch me next time on the S off Mic YouTube channel. Oh, and I'll soon be doing shout outs and thank yous to some of the most original and kind comments that I see right across all of my videos. I might even shout out one or two haters. Ha! See you next time.